Green. I remember reading like the fourth book of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants when I was like still a child. In the fourth book, I think one of them has like a pregnancy scare. <gasps> yeah. To be. Because she dies in the fifth. <gasps> what? Spoiler alert. She dies? She dies? She dies. She drowns in Greece. <gasps> what? And they think that she kills <laughs> no. herself because what? she's been estranged from the friend group for so what? long. And she moved to Australia. Are you, you're lying. And get this. Has a secret daughter. What? Who was two years old. Tibby? No, but did she kill herself? No. But, it but they think like she, she did because she left them all letters. Turns out she had a terminal illness. <gasps> what? And if you have a terminal illness, sometimes you don't die from that. You end up dying from <laughs> drowning in Greece. This is a White Star Line prepaid call from. Iceberg, right ahead. It's been over a hundred years since the Titanic sunk into the North Atlantic Ocean. It's a pretty open and shut case. The ship hit an iceberg, case closed. But what aren't they telling us? What if two comedians tried to solve what really happened? This is Truth Tannic. Ahoy! Hi, I'm Hello, Carly. I'm Blair. And welcome back to Truth Tannic. Oh my God, last week was the musical episode, so our pipes are warmed up and lubricated. Yeah, we're ready to go. Not a node in sight. No. This is the comedy podcast, <laughs> of course, where we aim to uncover the truth of what really happened that night when the Titanic sunk. And this week, we are off the boat. The boat has fight. sunk and we're talking about the aftermath. The aftermath of the sinking. The survivors. That's, I mean, we'll the get into it. The bodies in the water. We're not going to talk about the bodies in the water. The rigor mortis. We're not talking the about rigor corpses. mortis. We're talking about rigor mortis. Yeah, that's, this whole episode's basically just on rigor mortis. Rigor yeah. mortis? Rick and Morty. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> and this is an extra special episode because we have a beautiful guest here with us. A canceled comedian. Period. <laughs> but we're giving him another shot just yeah. to see what happens. We've kind of heard his side of the story. And we kind of think he's in the right. Yeah. So welcome to the podcast, Ben Sosa Wright. Um, ahoy, lady. Ahoy. ahoy. <laughs> Thank you for platforming me mm -hmm. after I've been deplatformed. People don't realize if you have your platform taken away, honey, you could claw your way back. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, It's for just sure. about being around. And you should. There was a time... Can I tell the story where I accidentally Please. kind of canceled Ben? That's true. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> because Ben last year, he was, and I'll drop your credits for you. Thank I'll you. drop them. JFL New Faces. Period. 2022. Yes. And he was also headlining JFL Toronto. Oh, God. Oh my and God. when they announced it, I shared it on my story. Um, and I think an, an important kind of wrinkle in this story is that your headshot, you look very masked. Yes. You look a little straight. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, and that's a compliment. Thank you. Being straight is the best thing you could be. That's and be, true. Yeah, being gay is weird. Being gay is bad. Being gay is and strange. And dare I say ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and the day we're recording this is the day to be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. Sorry. So no, this is counter protest. This yeah, is this is the counter protest. Sometimes there's so there's like a there's a homophobic protest happening in Toronto today. Um, and sometimes a counter protest is recording a podcast. Yeah. Absolutely. It's making more art so they can't silence you. It's a, yeah, it's actually a four. Like, this is actually a four. And I just, I, I wanted to say, art I don't, is protest. I don't think Stonewall would have happened if Marsha P. Johnson had a podcast. podcast. That's true. Oh, and no one's saying that. And I don't no think Stonewall would have happened if more people were at home doing Listen, crafts. Yeah, can exactly. I, can no, I say? You're so right for that. If, yeah. if, the, if the cops were at home doing, doing crochet, paper mache, yeah, making a little mobile to hang in their living room, they yeah. wouldn't have absolutely beat. The, the gays. gays. Yeah. yeah. I no. was back. Simple solutions. I was back at the Stonewall Inn on that fateful night date redacted because we don't have no, to get into yes. it. <laughs> and if I was there and I no, saw. Speak about queer history, though, but like what date and year was it? Oh, babies. <laughs> um, I For would... sure, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but before the 80s, I meant. And okay. I, <laughs> I would have seen Marsha P. Johnson pick up that brick. I would have grabbed it out of her hand. I would have said, shh, put that down. <laughs> you take my hand and you follow me. And we would have gone right to Zencaster headquarters, a podcasting studio. Okay. <laughs> we would have gotten her on the mic. I okay. know. She mm -hmm. should have had a podcast. She should have had a podcast. You've Why doesn't that, she You've know? seen that TikTok of that guy who wears pearls and he said that his fashion oh, inspiration yes. is Marsha, Marsha P. P. Johnson. <laughs> oh, and now I people just it. rip. Anytime he <laughs> makes a video, he just has a hundred people. She's going to be like, hey, guys, is this Marsha P. Johnson? Is, that like, <laughs> is this guy remind anyone else of Marsha I know, and P. Johnson? It is like, it is like, 
cringe, but it is like he was trying to be obviously nice. He was trying to be an ally. He was really trying to be an ally. And as queer people, we also reserve the right to not accept that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's also kind of funny in the way that like he kind of did low key become the greatest ally of all because he's provided years of comedic content. I know. And I'm really, just... what, do, what do gay people love more than to make fun of someone? <laughs> he's bringing the community together. Yes. More so, more so than Marsha P. Johnson could ever. No! Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. And I should say for the listener, I am not gay. I don't, no, care. I don't care how I sound. I don't care how I sound. Straight men he's can queer, sound this he's way. He's queer baiting. I'm queer baiting. So I posted like the yes. JFL posted like an announcement being like Ben is headlining JFL. <laughs> And I posted it on my story and like, because I have uh, years of some kind of like inherited trauma, I have an inability to like compliment my friend <laughs> outright. I have to like make a joke about it. So I posted weird that JFL would let Ben headline when he told me that I should leave comedy to the pretty girls. <laughs> and then I, and then I, I turned off my phone <laughs> And I went, and this was when I was working at CBC making, you like I'm making TikToks. So I turned off my phone uh, and gave myself an eyeliner kind of Lin-Manuel Miranda goatee <laughs> and filmed the video. And then I had to go, and then after I filmed the video, I hadn't taken the goatee off and I checked my phone and it was like, Messages, messages, messages being like, this is so fucked up. Let's cancel it. I am so sorry. So that I had to be like, I have, it's like, I have to stop. <laughs> I will say, and then I posted on it, being yeah. like, being like, I'm joking. He's my friend. He's my friend. I'm joking. He's gay. He's gay. <laughs> he's gay, so he can't be mean to me. <laughs> no, exactly. He's actually just being sassy. But I had to, like, I had to, like, in the picture, I had to cover my mouth with my hand because I had a Lin Manuel Miranda goatee drawn on still. But I like had to act fast. I didn't know this layer of the story that That's you were dealing so with. That. Yeah, because I was Funny. making some stupid fuck. And I'll say stupid. Like I'm not. I think I'm off contract of like I can shit talk the TikToks <laughs> I made. Signed an NDA with the CBC. <laughs> but I had to, to make, make like I had to make fucking like yeah. financial security. So this one was being like, I was probably like playing like a cashier or some shit like. It, or whatever it was. Probably, oh, I thought you were playing Lin Manuel Miranda. No, I just looked like because oh, I think it's okay. really funny. You know, I you, look. You really, look like Lin Manuel. No, it's like Miranda. when, when yeah. I when I put that on, I'm like, if I was a trans man, I would be Lin Manuel yeah, Miranda. Yeah, for sure. You're also like one breakdown away from writing a rap musical. Oh, I I've always said this. About you. <laughs> you all, and first of all, I don't <laughs> like hanging out with you. <laughs> you need to write the In the Heights, but of Toronto. Yeah, lights up on Regent Park Heights up at the break of day. <laughs> That's talent. <laughs> I wake up and I got this little white squirrel I got to chase away. Yeah. You get shot. <laughs> right, rightfully so. There's so many people that I'm like, respectfully, like, you're going to get shot if you're not careful. I have one friend who was like, for a while, so like, I'm from Scarborough. And to preface, I'm from Scarborough. But yeah, no, I know this guy who was just like, yeah, we'll move to Toronto. But I was thinking of like moving to Scarborough instead. And I was like, you respectfully will be shot. They're not going to take that. Like, well. no, you're like, and you especially like, no, like you can't, you can't. No. Don't go there. I grew up in. Don't Gre go anywhere. I grew up in Greek town, ladies. So. Uh, no, no, that's the, that's the Jewish. What's that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say Greek town. That's the Jewish area. Jewish <laughs> it's sorry. a fucking Greek you can town, be Carly. Sorry, you can be Jewish in Greek. Yeah, sorry. So Greek town. Sorry. That's yeah. the Jewish area of town, right? P yes. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you couldn't pronounce Spanakapita. Or Luca Matas at your local Athens bakery. You're getting shot with an AK-47, honey. You're getting and I mean, I grew up blasted. in America. I grew up in America. Peppered with bullets every day. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you're just gonna get I shot. Just, I think I've period. actually I've talked about this on the podcast before, but it is shocking to me how bad Canadians like gun violence reaction is. Like, because I was one time after the Raptors parade, like there was a shooting. Yeah. And the way Canadians love to stand in a glass box while the shooting's going. <laughs> on. And oh I'm like, God. girlies, move away, move, let's go, move let's away, go, let's go. Here. Exactly. People love the drama. That's why we love the drama. Blair you and I really love, love the drama. drama. No, even there was a car crash in front of my house the other day. Brag. And they, yeah, I know it was awesome. Massive bright. So they uh, literally right in front of my house. And then one car swerved and hit all the Bixie bikes. Oh, no. <laughs> so Not it was, those. It was just chaos. And then, of course, like everyone on the street, just including me, just went out and sort of stood there looking. And I was like, this is crazy. Like a crazy thing to do. Yeah. Kind of stand there and be like, that is a big, I think, city living. There's a lot of that where you're like, well, I'm gonna just kind of go and check it out. Yeah, you have to know you what's going to. on. Yes. If I don't know what's going on, I'll die. Yes. Yeah. 
It's like that kind of grade 10 thing of like seeing a dead bird on the sidewalk and being like, I got to put that on my Instagram. <laughs> did you ever do that? No. Yes. Blue I, went to arts I high school. That. You did it, I girl. Did that. I all... still do that. I went, to, I went to sports high school like a fucking Nightmare. regular person. Lesbian. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just sounded the lesbian alarm. I don't know if that's part of your podcast, but I had to sound it. We, you sports we, girl. It is now. I was not playing sports. What are you, sports. Bridget from the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants? Yo, she Her did play sports. sports. She yeah, played that was soccer. Shailene. No, not Shailene. Uh, Serena. That yeah. Really Blake, yes, Blake Lively. Blake Lively. Blake Lively. Blake Lively. Yeah. Before her nose job. She had a very good nose job. And I'll never forget in the books to describe her like light, light blonde hair. The author describes her hair as being the color of peeled banana. Oh, yeah. I remember that's, that. That's supposed to be beautiful. I remember that. <laughs> I was like, for sure, say like corn silk or something. Corn silk. Gold. No. Peeled gold. banana. Peeled banana. Vanilla um, ice cream. I remember reading like the fourth book of The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants when I was like still a child. Like I must have been like seven years old. Absolutely. Maybe eight. And they had sex in one scene. And <gasps> I closed the book and I was like, this is too old for me. <laughs> would have been and like walked away. Would have been Tibby and Brian. Mm, I think it was. Or would have been that's, that's, that's Rory. Rory's. Yes. yes. Yeah. Wait. No. But there was Rory's like, Lena. And which like, one's the one that has a a friend that dies of leukemia? That's, that's Tibby. Tibby. Okay. That's Tibby. Tibby's oh leukemia. My God. Lena's Her, in Greece. Yes. Blake is at soccer. 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 getting him. In Mexico. She's getting, she's in getting, Mexico. But she's getting groomed. Can I be real? She was grooming him. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. You no. Can't no be I'm kidding. Real. I'm kidding. <laughs> That and she goes back to a soccer camp in maybe the third book. Yes. And she's a counselor. Yeah. And then she's working with the man who groomed her. I mean, okay, looking back, but I feel like there was more. Oh, they end up together in the sex. books. They truly end up together. It's pretty little liar. For story. sure. There was like implied sex in the book that for sure I missed as like a seven year old child. Oh, yeah. But in the fourth book, I think one of them has like a pregnancy scare. <gasps> yeah. Tibby. It's Tibby. Yeah. What's you know, it's like, hasn't Tibby been through enough? <laughs> no. Tibby? Well, yeah, she, she needs goes to go through, through more. Because she dies in the fifth. <gasps> what? Spoiler alert. She dies? She dies? She dies. She drowns in grief. <gasps> what? And they think that she kills no. herself <gasps> because what? she's been estranged from the friend group for so what? long. And she moved to Australia. Are you, you're lying. And get this, has a secret daughter. What? Who is two years old. Tibby? Tibby. Wait, so she does or doesn't die? She does die. She dies? And get this. And get this. They and think she killed her herself because she left them all did letters. Did she die? What? Like, no, but did she kill herself? No. But, it but seems they like think she, she did because she, because she left, left them all letter. letters. Turns out she had a terminal illness. <gasps> And if you have a terminal illness, sometimes you don't die from that. You end up dying from drowning in Greece Honestly. instead. So she was really going through it. And then her daughter was kind of kept a secret from the other girls. When but did she have the daughter? Well, the, the book fifth four? book takes place like years and years after the fourth. So they're all oh. in their thirties now. Like Carmen oh. is an established like procedural actress. Bridget is living in San Francisco. She's trying to figure it out still. Lena is an art teacher. Okay, if, if we didn't see that one coming. Okay. In. okay. I did. And Bridget, or sorry, Tibby is estranged from the group. Wow. So what? when she dies at the shock, and dare I, not even dare I say, in the fifth of the book, she's not even like in it. Because she's dead. Because she's dead. They kill And her death Tibby? is like the inciting incident. Like they're all, the whole book kind is them like processing the why. The why. Yeah. Okay, and I haven't read this. I was like the writing class. <laughs> oh, isn't this the one, did this come out later than Sisterhood all the other Sisterhood Everlasting, yes. Okay, so this one I have not read. I wouldn't remember that. Yeah, yeah you this would for new. sure remember if Kitty died. <laughs> it's, it's new and-, and I haven't yeah. read any of the books. The books were, those were like yeah. a little- um, Too old for you. Yeah, and by the time, because my I read like a lot of, I, I, I definitely grew up in like the golden era of like yeah. YA or whatever. Mm -hmm. yes. But I did read, we talked about this off mic last week, the Click books. Oh. Which are kind of the antithesis to the Sister of the Traveling Pants. Yes, Because it's, it's not about like genuine connection and finding it out. It's yeah. basically about how popularity and name brand clothing are the only things that add value to it. <laughs> yeah. And I loved it. Like I didn't even know what any of these things look like, but I was like Ralph Lauren Blazer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ralph, for sure. Ralph Lauren Blazer. I can see that navy blue. Yeah, I was I was a Gossip Girl fan because yes. as soon as I heard Same there was energy. a Blair in Gossip Girl, I was like, I need to read that. And because your name is that. Because my name is Blair also. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, I need to read these books. And the show came out and I was like, amazing. I need to see Blair in the show. So it was really just me. And that's if that's, that's the it. character to be named after. It really, yeah. it really one. is. Because I watched iCarly. Because my because name is Carly. Carly. And yeah. you, Carly isn't the best. You no. want you, It's Sam. Yeah. No, I'm really glad that now as an adult, or I can look he. back and be like, I pledged loyalty to Blair Waldorf so early in my life. And I was right. You were correct. I was correct. She's the best character. She's the best character. Imagine how I felt growing up watching Ben 10. <laughs> <laughs> 
Shut up. No, I'm not, imagine it. Imagine it. Close I'm, your eyes no, and imagine. I actually refuse. <laughs> and people would call people would call me Ben Ten. Because you were ten. Yeah. Really? I didn't do it. Thank you, girl. Did they call you Ben? <laughs> did they tell you call you Ben Ten when you were ten years old? They'd be like Ben Ten. That was my ben year. Ben Ten. That's when that, that was your that was my year. Sh- that was my champagne, champagne birthday. Year. Champagne my champagne year. birthday champagne was year. when I was ten years old. <laughs> okay, the Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> okay, so episode four. We are discussing the aftermath of the sinking. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. So when we last left the Titanic, she's at the bottom of the ocean floor, lost at sea. Nobody knows where the wreckage is at this point. Oh, my God. Um, The survivors were transported to the Carpathia Mm. and taken to New York City. Oh. Okay. And why? <laughs> okay, so they're going they were, to Broadway. Yeah, the, treat, yeah, the, the survivors were kind of all singing three bucks, two bags, one, one me. And zero Titanic. Thank God. No Titanic. <laughs> but can we just say the Carpathia are real heroes of this whole story? The Carpathia is slayed. Yeah, they were slaying. Can they were I, slaying. Can I just Even recommend? Saving. <laughs> can I recommend some New York City hotspots for the survivors? Sure. You gotta check out Brooklyn. Brooklyn. You gotta check no, out Brooklyn. No, if you're just gonna be in Manhattan, no, the you're wasting you gotta make it. the you're trek. Waste. And if you're in it's Manhattan, worth it. do, do me a favor. Don't go anywhere north of 14th Street. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're gonna see Back to the Future on Broadway. <laughs> or Shucked. I actually oh. knew that's good. I have yeah. on my, it, so you know when you have like your on repeat on Spotify? Yeah. I have independently owned from Shucked on my on Oh, that's a good one. Because it's Alex Newell absolutely ripping yes. No, Alex Newell's so, so good. talented. Tony so Award talented. winner. Glee oh Project alumni. Two, can I say something? Actually? Two people from the Glee Project have now won Tony's. Who's Alex the other? Al- yeah. Yeah. Oh and the girl God, that I really? tell you, there's, there's a girl that I yeah. follow on YouTube who is an alphabet on Broadway, and she was also from the Glee Project. Oh my God. Lindsay she, Heather Pierce. That, oh God. I remember saying no, it's all coming back. And to she it. got in trouble because they told her for the romance one that she had to kiss this Christian guy who didn't want to kiss. So she forcibly kissed him under the producer's Blake. thing. Oh my God. Yeah. And then she got in trouble and she was canceled basically on like Glee Twitter, but for oh just God. for doing something that the producers told her to do. She was like 17. That's yeah. So and rude. also Ryan Murphy had like the sick fetish on yes. the Glee project where he was like, I'm really fascinated by having like a cool Christian. I want like a cool <laughs> Christian yes. character. And I'll never forget Blake Mitchell was like going to win that season. Like Ryan Murphy. He got until he left and then there was another guy who had dreadlocks. dreadlocks and then he like randomly one episode was like you know I love God too I have a tattoo of Jesus and I'll never forget the look on, on Ryan, Ryan Murphy's face he was like I've won the lottery because, it was because so that, disgusting because that, wasn't he on Glee he like, was on Glee. Glee he was a cool I remember and he taught Quinn Fabre to walk again yes <laughs> <laughs> After she went in a car crash for texting and driving. For texting and driving. One more thing, about the, one thing about the Glee project. Two things. First of all, the, um, new conspiracy theory: the Titanic sunk because the captain was texting and driving. Oh, that's true. I know that happened. Yeah. They literally. That's kind of true though, because happened. they were. He was radioing and, and driving. driving. That's so <laughs> dang, that's so dangerous because I dare I say it's easier to kind of do to do with tap 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 with your thumbs than to twisting listen. on a dial. Yeah, yeah. Be like, come ah, on. And in. then you're burr, listening burr, burr. to static. Scary, first bad. of all. No, the other thing bad. that I want to say about the Glee Project, and then we'll start talking about the actual Titanic. What I love about that game show so much. It's like or it's like a competition show to be on Glee, on and, Glee. The, uh, and the prize is being on an episode of Glee. And it's or I think having an a, arc. An arc. Yeah. yeah Cause if you, cause crazy. second place, you get a three episode arc mm. and then third place, yes, you get like a seven yes, episode yes, arc yes. or whatever. <laughs> Can you imagine being the writers? <laughs> I know. I'm like, what? Oh so God. well, because the scoring, they'd score you on like the group music video, mm-hmm. a solo song. And then the third thing was just if Ryan Murphy thought he could write a story about you. <laughs> so that's what, that was the third thing was just if Ryan Murphy would be, he would come in at the end and sit in like an auditorium and be like, tell me about yourself. <laughs> That's so, so like, funny. That's why that guy was like, I'm also a Christian because yeah. he's like selling himself. Yeah. Because the winner was just a guy who was from Ireland. Yeah. And that was his whole thing. His whole thing was he was from Ireland. <laughs> and he was in like a touring, like all male Irish vocal group called yeah. like the Sh- the Shamrocks. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Tard the world. Um, then there was the guy, was there was the guy Blake, was the guy Blake one who's yeah. an abuser. Yes. Blake Jenner. Yes. Blake, that oh. is his name. That's his name. Isn't that yeah, crazy? He's like, he like abused Superwoman. Yeah, Superwoman. Yeah. Gal Gadot? No. No, that's, that's Wonder. Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Not, not us getting mad at Blair for confusing a DC super. Uh, no idiot. <laughs> but it's like, Look, I don't even know. I'm going to drown myself in Greece. Okay. Like, Tibby. I'm going to Tibby myself. I have to say, this is the last thing I'll ever say about Tibby drowning in Greece. Is, uh, I, was one I don't believe you. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't believe this is the last thing you're ever going to say. That. It's water themed. <laughs> I, I can't see us moving past Tibby drowning at this point. <laughs> well, I was doing a show where I was talking about that, and I kind of mean like Tibby was Tibby drowned in Greece, 
And people kept reacting like, oh, uh. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, she drowned in Greece. And they were like, like the country or the liquid. And I had never been more disappointed <laughs> in a group of adults. I was like, and Brush here's didn't write a character getting deep fried. <laughs> like, so, so like a saw film. Like she. That's kind of funny, country. honestly. She fell into, she funny. fell into like a, a vat. A vat of grease. That's so she was dumb. Working That's at actually McDonald's. really dumb about That's this That's dumb thing. of her. Okay. Did head first. The Carpathian help the remaining survivors. <laughs> Now in lifeboats. <laughs> and they docked in New York City on April 18th, 1912. So now it's wow. time they've started to uh, recover the bodies of the dead. The stiffs, oh, as they the were called. stiffs, because they were frozen. Yes. Frozen stiffs. So the SS McKay Bennett was the first ship to recover bodies. They recovered 306 bodies. Oh. 116 were buried at sea. 190 were taken to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Canadians do it better. Period. For burial. Get a lobster roll while, while you're, you're there. there. Dead bodies. Don't air sauce. <laughs> go, ch go check out Dalhousie yeah. University. I was, I toured. So there's a, there's a university in, in, I will. in Nova Scotia. <laughs> There's a university in Nova Scotia called the University of King's College and it's really oh, yes. small. And yes. I toured there when I was going to university because they gave me like, because they're so small that like they, they were like, they, they gave me like a big scholarship and I was like, maybe I'll go here. Hmm. Um, and Congrats, it was bro, the congrats. weirdest, it was full of the weirdest fucking people. Yeah. Not to, if any of our King's College listeners are listening. Sorry, King's love College. Love you guys. It was beautiful. Yeah. Old buildings, gorgeous, right gorgeous. Right the water. The weirdest fucking yeah. people in hey. the entire world. <laughs> they would like argue with you just in conversation. Like you'd be like, oh, I actually really like the poetry of Sappho. And they'd be like, don't you mean actually, do you actually mean like the, the retranslated version? Or do you oh. mean in the original Greece and Greek? And you're like, what are you Oh no, I actually meant to put a gun in my mouth. No, exactly. <laughs> well, actually, let me go tibby <laughs> myself. With respect to anyone who went to like a weirder university, but like there's like, there are so many universities in Canada where it's just like, why are you going to this like very small school? To be a big fish. And, I, and that's like, why I wanted to go. I was like, I'm yeah. ready to be big fish. But yeah. I was like, exactly. in this pond? No. Yeah. No. I was like, I want to, I want to hide. <laughs> the SS Mina picked up 15 bodies. Two were buried at sea and the rest returned to Halifax. Do that bath. 13. 13. Okay. Can I just say that's actually a lot of bodies to recover. Immediately. They I know. actually got well, a lot of them out of the water. Yeah. There were, were people, frozen just bobbing there. I were bet. they like, were you making commission for each body found? I bet kind it of was. like a sale at American I'm Apparel. It was probably yeah. part of like some kind of US government funded thing yeah. of like, let's retrieve the bodies. Because if I were retrieving bodies and I found like 40, I'd be like, hello. It's like tree planting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like tree planting. <laughs> You get like paid per body. Yes. But bodies of kids probably count as just half. Yeah. But if you, if you stick They're lighter. To, I'm sorry, they're stick, lighter. The workload is less. Together. Yeah, but, Work but, but, smarter, but, 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 not but, harder. But then they're hard to spot because they're smaller. Oh, not, get this, not if they're ugly. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Because you know when you see an ugly kid, you're like, ah! ah! <laughs> oh. Yeah. The SS, <laughs> the SS so Mont, 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 Montgammon. Whatever. Who cares? What did you just call me? <laughs> Only recovered four bodies. One was buried at sea. When we say that, when we say buried at sea, buried at sea, is that just like we, we leave them there? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I think it means like if the body was kind of beyond yes. recognition, kind mm, of thing. Okay. If it had been eaten by something or something or rotting <gasps> in a way that you know, like a I mean. mermaid. Yeah. If it had been eaten by, by like a mermaid. mermaid. Yeah. Nessie. A, a, Nessie. a seagull. A seagull. Um, the other mythical creature. A siren. A manatee, or should I say, my ex. The giant. <laughs> the giant squid. <gasps> Watchmen. Imagine, imagine you're in the ocean, you get inked by the giant squid. Oh, imagine. Well, I'd, imagine. Be, I'd be flattered. It'd be, it'd be awesome. Like, so I'd be like, you know what? I'm one of the me. only people can say that this has happened to me. And the last <laughs> ship was the SS Algerian, which only found one body. Okay. Of its okay. Wake it's up, the last Algerian. one. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, there's absolutely bullshit. no excuse for that. You're the yeah. last one and that's what you recover. Yeah, I mean, and say, honestly, save the best for last. Don't bother coming back. And humiliated. you know, they just kind of like hung back like when everyone else left being like, oh, <laughs> we're going to go in like 15 minutes. No, yeah. yeah. Like we're going to Early bird out. gets the worm. Yeah, it's like- Early there. bird gets the- They were just yeah. like, we don't want to do the work. We just want to- early bird gets the 306 Six bodies. bodies. You know what? Those had all the sailors that were fucking on that one. Yeah. And they were like, they just wanted to go out to have yeah. a, a pleasure cruise. The SS Algerian was only virgins on the crew. Meanwhile, the SSS McKay Bennett, yeah. gaping holes, gaping, gaping holes, holes, wet, 
pro pro prolapse prolapse raw, raw cocks rock raw, raw cocks raw cocks rock hard Every raw cocks. cocks that's actually my favorite rock kind of vocal warm up rock hard raw cocks rock hard raw cocks of its red total leather, yellow leather red, red leather, leather yellow leather and of the tongue of the teeth and the teeth of the taint of its total 2,240 passengers and crew, only 706 people survived the Titanic. Only that. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, and mostly women. All the men died. Yeah. Because, you know, the well, because they were leaning the in. The kids. They, they were, were leaning, leaning in. in. They were leaning it's in. It's called misandry. I know. Yes. My dears. I am. A, I do think I might be a, a misandrist. <laughs> I'm a misandrist. Is that you say misandrist? I don't know. I was a I was dressed. I mean, am I right? That's a drag queen. I was like, oh, oh. that's actually a really good drag queen. She's right? on season ninety three. Yeah. yeah, and like, and honestly, like her looks aren't that good. No, but no. she's fun. But she's, she's fun, funny. and she is. He has a podcast. She's dry because she survived the Titanic. So once the uh, like once the Titanic survivors returned to the dock, and we'll talk about individual stories of survival a little bit later. Mm. There was two inquiries launched by the UK government. And the American government basically figuring out if there had been any foul play, if there was anybody to blame, basically like inquiries into the disaster itself and also into White Star Line, the like the company that ran the Titanic. Mm -hmm. White Star Line. That sounds so evil. It does. I do really think that this really was the beginning of the end. For them in a way. Oh, totally. Really? I really think it's hard yeah. to come back from this. It's hard to come back it's from like, this. It's like, oh, I'm never getting on a Malaysian Airlines flight. <laughs> I'm never doing it. Well, and it's also uh, sort of like, because after when this- When you lost. White Star Line was kind of already, you know, they, cause they were like, Ben, I don't know if you know this, but like, basically they were like, we need to build, there was this other ship line that was building really, really fast ships. So White Star Line was like, we're just gonna build ships that are so fucking big mm. that like everyone's gonna be wowed by them. And so, like, they were just kind of moving away from, like, efficiency. <laughs> and so, eventually, they end up, like, amalgamating their lines with Cunard, the Cunard line, oh. which is the other, basically, their rivals at one time. Um, so, it's yeah. like when Disney purchased whatever. Yeah. It's it was like, it was a Disney, Disney purchase. White Star Cunard. So, we'll talk first about the U.S. inquiry. No. It was done by the Senate. No. Our boys. Yes. Mitch McConnell and his black hand. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Have you seen this? No. So, Mitch McConnell has... A, a basically a black hand. Oh my god! And like people are like, I'll show you a picture because oh he's like, god. people are like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah. And it looks like he is dying. So that's his hand. Oh my <gasps> god! No. It looks. It looks like a a witch's curse. He it looks, looks like, like Dumbledore and how I know. Friends. Blair the the restraint. Like the way I was trying to hold all I could think about like Dumbledore. He's wearing the ring, he's wearing the ring. And let's just like say the ring, it right like the ring, now. like the ring. It's a horcrux. It's let's, a horcrux. And let's just say it right now. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my that is so God. twisted. And everyone's like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine, it's normal. Well, oh, he had his famous viral like blackout on stage. I know. He's gonna die. On stage. On stage. I'll say it right now. I think he's gonna die. I hope he does. Yeah, he's for sure gonna but die. But I genuinely- He's an evil man. To, not to get real, but it's like, why don't we have like age caps on- I know. that Because I'm like, at at some point when you get to a certain age, you can't drive. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So like, I, what? why do we you think- pass, Why are you leaving? You can leading? pass laws? Like, I that's know. insane. It's like also like being a politician has such a weight on you. Yeah. Like, you know, it like would it, make it your hands fly. You. Yeah, like it would make your, your like, a, like, you know, look at Obama, like a year after being I president, he was fully gray. Yeah. Fully it's like, cry. yeah, it fucks your body. Like, if you're that old, like, it's yeah. too stressful. Like, go. The sleep schedule must be so crazy. It must be bad. There's like a new, yeah. the first Gen Z <laughs> congressman. Like, there's like, it's like he's the first, I think he's either a member, member of Senate or Congress. I don't know, but I was reading an article about him. He's like the first, like, he's like 30 years old or whatever, or like maybe even younger, like 25 or something. Oh my God. And he's in Congress and he had to move to DC. And because his credit is so bad, nobody would rent him an apartment and he's like i'm <laughs> in congress that is so it's not crazy like, name something more indicative of like that's so 2023 i have a friend and when they did the so they had the cursed child come here like the play Why? and on the opening night there was doug ford and jk rowling at the opening night party oh, so fucking and we have a friend and she invited as her date um her best friend who's also trans yeah. so they could go up to jk rowling and say your books meant so much to me. Just to see the look on her face. Yeah. Like a trans woman comes up to her and is like, say something. Oh my God, and what, say ha something. what happened? She just like didn't like react. Like like, like she was like, thank oh you or whatever. Uh, whatever. I know, I wanted her to melt. That's funny. She's so evil. She's, she's so evil. Like, it's actually so funny to see someone be like, 
Oh, no, oh. no. You thought I was just misinformed? No. no. I'm a vile person. That's like, the thing, because when she started all this stuff, it was like, oh, she's probably just like- Out of touch. Out of touch or whatever. And then she just leaned in to like a super And villain. also, obviously, I know I everyone I think she had a stroke and everyone, lead poisoning. That's my theory. No, she's she, she, has, she has a, a tumor. For sure. Tumor, lead yeah. poisoning, stroke. But it is the thing of like, not to, obviously, people listening aren't- rampant transphobes probably <laughs> but it's not like the whole argument of like safe spaces in bathrooms it's not like a cis man can't just walk into the bath like you know what oh, i mean yeah like if yeah. you wanted to molest a woman Literally. you can do it yeah i'm like and that's been a problem and, for years and is, ladies you're not going to you know, transition to do it yeah like you're like you're not going to stop you can just the door opens exactly and, like it's not locked <laughs> and, and 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 ladies you want to make a safe space in a bathroom maybe stop gossiping so much Seriously, stop being bitches and whores and maybe this bathroom so will feel stop safe. Stop writing a whore on the bathroom here and red lipstick yeah. like Natalie Portman the Black Swan. Yeah, maybe stop period blooding all over the <laughs> seat if you want to safe space in your bathroom, ladies. Yeah, oh, stop God. period blooding There is a thing, and I'll say this to anybody J. who J. has Rowling. like, like yeah. J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. Anybody stop who's... miscarrying in the toilet. Like, maybe everyone will feel no. safe. <laughs> Here's what I'll say to J.K. Rowling. You want, <laughs> if J.K. Rowling wants bathrooms to be safe spaces for women. Maybe first focus on filtering out the air so every time I enter a woman's restroom, it doesn't smell like pussy. Yeah. Because <laughs> I yeah. have never not entered a public, a public washroom for women. And honey, and I'm going to take that idea. I'm going to say, take that vent, make a channel so it goes to the men. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> Papa like. Yeah. The Papa boys want, need to smell pussy more than other no, women do. it like smells oftentimes like, I'm like, oh, I've entered into yeah. a pussy. Oh yeah, for that sure. Can you, name a, like, can you name a specific ladies, time Ladies, let's in use unscented soap. <laughs> that was like the first time me and Ben became friends because <laughs> I, we were doing a show together and I left a bathroom, a washroom, like at a, at a comedy place and was like, it smells like pussy in there. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, okay, she's I, my friend for life. I named names, yeah. but I won't name this. No, okay. not here, not so here. So the US became the formal inquiry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> on April 9th, 1912, and it ended on May 25th, 1912. After my birthday. And they, so it was, they basically questioned 82 witnesses of the survivors and oh, such, wow. um, including the chairman of the White Star Line, J. Bruce Ismay, which we've talked about. The coward of the Titanic. Yeah, he, is, he was branded with the name the coward of the Titanic because oh, they God. sent him on a lifeboat, basically, so somebody who understood the ship could come back and basically do this and like talk about it if there was mm -hmm. an inquiry because he's a chairman, so he knows about the ship, he knows what's happened, all this stuff. But because he got on the ship on a lifeboat when women and children still died, he was branded as like the coward of the oh, Titanic. They did not like that. They did not like that he let women and children die inadvertently by getting on. Okay. I'm definitely of the mind that like, while Interesting. it does suck that women and children died, uh -huh. it's like not his fault, like- No. Was he like told to do that? Yeah, like they were like, well, th that was kind of the belief that they were like somebody from this because the captain dies with the ship, all that stuff. Yeah. Like somebody mm -hmm. from White Star and Thomas Line. Andrews died. Yeah, the architect died. The architect no. died. All that. He, but he's like the kind of guy in the Titanic movie who's like, you want to get your headlines. Like he's like, go fast I think or whatever. You might get your headlines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bruce Ismay was like, yeah. And the other thing you don't have to understand, and we talked about this briefly before, but like after the Titanic sank, it immediately entered like a mythos in terms yes. of the way that people were talking about it. Um, so like a lot of things that we know now as like fact kind of came from like stories that were then like reported and told into this like narrative. So yeah. like Bruce Ismay like pushing a woman into the water so he could get into a boat probably didn't happen because on the boat, a lot of people were like, I'm just going to wait until I see the other ship before I get onto a lifeboat. Like I'm yeah. not just going to get onto like a lifeboat or like the ship isn't really going to sink, you know? And then yeah. like, so you can't really like blame him really. Yeah. And if he didn't go, yeah, there'd be very few people to be like, the ship was built like this and this is what happened. And this is what was going on like in the like, um, what you who's it? The shipper, the uh, mystery place. Deck. The poop yeah. deck. The bridge. The bridge. The bridge. The, the, bridge. <laughs> the poop deck. <laughs> that, that is, yeah, that would be a crazy position to be put in. For sure. I mean... Honey, yeah, I'd do it. And during the congressional investigations, Ooh. some of the witnesses who were passengers, they testified that during the voyage, they heard Ismay pressuring Captain Smith to increase the speed of the Titanic in order to arrive in New York ahead of schedule, schedule mm -hmm. so they could generate new, more press. But again, mm -hmm. it's like, this could just be, because there's also a thing that we'll talk about later in the conspiracy theory episode, where like everyone was like, there was a mummy on the Titanic and there wasn't. <laughs> There was, but it's just like people were like, "I heard this." Yeah, yeah. Oh, people are searching. Yeah, people are searching. They're drama. Want, they're yeah. drama. They want meaning. They want meaning. Yes. I, 
so you're saying you, Carly yeah. and Blair, because you're an accomplice. If they were going, they were going fast, and that was bad. Like they shouldn't have been going fast, fast, fast to New York. They should have been slower. Well, the thing is, like they were told, like other ships that night because of the ice stopped completely. Gotcha. And they were encouraging people. To, they were encouraging them to keep going because yeah. they're like, we want to make headlines in yeah. NY City. Yeah. NY oh, City. NY City. NY City. <laughs> Annie's hometown. Her, heard of her? Yeah, heard of her? The if she was on the Titanic, her. let's just say this. Everyone would have died. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone would have She would have just shot them with a gun. She would have Because Annie gets your gun. <laughs> <laughs> Broadway. Broadway. There's Broadway. way too many, fun, like, there's way too many musical references. We have, it's because we have streamers. We have sparkly streamers behind. I know. Yeah, we're yeah. ready. That's Broadway. So they also, um, there was an, they also interviewed the second officer, Charles Lightoller, and Marconi operator, Harold Bride. I don't know what that is. He was the other guy on the... So Harold Bride, the Marconi operator, was the the other wireless operator. Okay, so he was operating the, like, the... Um, what's so, it called? The trans... Whatever? Tra yeah, the, like, the transmitter. Jackie Rowling be like... So, <laughs> transmitter. Um, the transmitter, so, yes. Jack Jackie Rowling be like, I refuse to operate that machine. I will not... No, that is a cismitter. I will not... That is a cismitter. <laughs> So last episode, I'm just we saying J.K. Rowling about... gives vibes of like she'd be on the Titanic and she'd be like, I'm not getting into the lifeboat until I see the other boat. Yeah, for sure. And then she oh, would have died. And, and she's fine. And it's Which honestly so fine. So Harold Bride, the wireless operator, yes. uh, was the junior colleague to Jack Phillips, who went down with the ships, who was a senior Tom operator. Holland. Tom Holland, yes. who We've famously Holland. got the ice yeah. warning and it didn't say it was from the captain. So he thought he was just kind of being like annoyed. And he said, shut up, shut up to the people telling him that there were ice. There was yeah. ice, and then the Californian he was turned off the radio. <laughs> That's a lesson to everyone here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You won't be able to take you seriously, finish your homework. Exactly. He was sending passenger telegrams, so he's sending like gossip to the mainland. Yeah. And uh, was just like, I can't have all these ice warnings. Uh, so there was also an eyewitness account of a first class passenger named Elizabeth Lines, who after the sinking stated in a deposition that she overheard Ismay encouraging the captain to arrive in New York ahead of schedule in order to beat the transatlantic crossing time of the Olympic. Mm. But recently historians have called this testimony into question. <gasps> okay. So oh. it's kind of been debunked past the deposition in modern times by like modern Titanic historians. Mm -hmm. So we're not believing women anymore. Well, they'd be lying. Well, they're, yeah. Well, it's and also the, they'd be stopping. <laughs> it's also the other, the other thing about like the speed of the Titanic was that like they knew that they weren't the fastest boat. Like yeah, they so were, who cares? they were just like, yeah. our boats are really, really big. Even though they're a little bit slower. It's so like, so, why are you wanting everything? I think it's just like the narrative that like they were going so fast that they couldn't turn away from the iceberg. Like they mm -hmm. just had to go into it. It's like, that was like for sure a factor, but it wasn't even close to like the biggest factor. But again, it's that like the mythos, crash. right? Where it's, it's like they want to, there's so many, because like, because of a trauma, you know what they say? We're like, this is a reason why yeah. um, a lot of like, presidential assassinations. It's like the reason people say like the second shooter in the JFK mm -hmm. or also in the Bobby Kennedy assassination. A lot of people have differing accounts of it. Yeah. Because in a time of trauma, your brain's like memory like warps. <laughs> so like a lot of people are going to have differing opinions of yes. this because they're going to be like, there was a thing with the Bobby Kennedy assassination where he basically got shot in front of everybody point blank in the head. Yeah. But a lot of people were like, he got shot from behind. <gasps> and it's because like the trauma yeah. Do you know what oh, I mean? Like your yeah. your brain will be like, no, I heard that. I heard that happening. People are watching it For happening sure. in a mirror. Exactly. People are watching it happening in a mirror. Women. Women. Can't get away from the mirror. They had their little compact mirror putting on lip gloss oh during the Bobby God. Kennedy assassination. And and I know. It's, it's, like, it's like, the, the thing about women that drives me insane is that the Bobby Kennedy assassination could literally be happening right in front of them and they'd still be putting on lip gloss. He's a period. Pattering their fucking nose. If you're doing a TikTok dance right now, check. Your you're privilege. Six. Check your privilege. <laughs> Check your privilege. Ben Hecht, who is uh, like an author, a poet. Wait. Like you. Oh. He wrote a poem Aww. about a J. Bruce Ismay. Mm. And the final verses, wow. to hold your place in the ghastly face of death on the sea at night is a seaman's job, but to flee with the mob is an owner's noble right. Burn. Whoa. Burn. How would you Nicki show Minaj your face? Could never, never do that. How would you never. show your face after that? That is so. If somebody ever wrote a poem about just how much you're dragging, you? dragging you? <laughs> oh, my that's God. such a gorgeous poem too. It's lovely. New poets forgot that rhyming is effective. I know. You, if it was, if it was like, great. if it was Rupert Rupi Carr, she'd be like, yeah. And then you I got was, on yeah, the boat. I was a museum of art, but Jay Bruce Ismay had his eyes closed. <laughs> Carly. Oh my God, Ruby Carr. Was, yeah. Who are you? <laughs> U of T alumni. 
<laughs> the British inquiry found that, I'm going to read from a quote here, Mr. Ismay, after rendering assistance to many passengers, found the sea collapsible, the last boat on the starboard side, which I think we decided was left, just kind of universally. Left, yeah. Mm. Um, Stage left. Actually being lowered. No other people were there at the time. There was room for him and he jumped in. Had he not jumped, he would merely have added one more life, namely his own, to the number of those lost. So the inquiry found, mm. at least the British one, that he was at no fault to his own. There was nobody else there. He could have yeah. died like nobly, but he would just have died. It wasn't like yeah. he took the spot it's of It's like you might else. as well. Why not? That's yes. wouldn't been going to anyone. Yeah. After this though, London society ostracized him, labeled him a coward. Oh my God. I know. Yeah. So here's the thing. If I were him, I'd be like, if you were on the Titanic or a survivor and you're mad at me, I'd be like, absolutely go for it. But if you weren't there, it's like, well, girl, you weren't there. You don't know what it was like for me. I know. I'd so be like, so to be mad ostracized about. for that by British society who are like presently just like killing people en masse in other countries. They they know. I'd be like, I'd be like, what about the museums? Yeah. What's yeah, in the, what museums? the museums? What's in the museums? Check the tape before you come for me. <laughs> and that's actually a blanket thing. That's actually a blanket. You better check the tape, tape. museum before you ever come for oh, me. Oh, and check your taint oh. as well. And check your taint as <laughs> <Damn>. well. <laughs> See what's going on there. On June 30th, 1913, Ismay resigned as president of the International Mercantile Marine oh. and the chairman of the White Star Line. Mm. So he, he was haunted by the Titanic for the rest of his life. Spooky. Until he died. Ooh, <laughs> until he died in... October 17th, 1934, from diabetes. <gasps> diabetes. Okay. Whoa. So Nick Jonas's ancestor. Yes, exactly. Part of the Nick Jonas tribe. Of diabetes. That's actually yes. type one or, Type one or two. I mean, this was back in the time where diabetes period was kind really? of like. Well, because have you ever seen um, no. Steel Magnolias? No. Okay. <laughs> Because I believe it's Julia Roberts no has diabetes in it. No spoilers. No spoilers. That's all. Oh, that's the part of the that's plot. That's a spoiler. We spoiler. should cut that. It's a great a movie. Spoiler. It's a great movie. Mm. But she has like, I remember being like, I had to look into like what diabetes was like in the past because my only thing I know about diabetes is like the kids that I went to camp with who had diabetes got way better fucking food yeah. than the rest of us. And were like, as annoying as fuck. I know. I was yeah. like, oh my God, they're basically like the Italians of How diseases. Come they're you? the Italians of diseases. They let you fucking know. <laughs> How come you get to have a Dunkaroo? Exactly. They'd like it like, we would have to eat like <laughs> absolute- sunny D. We'd have to eat like the most rancid gray chicken legs and they get like a pepper full of like- rice and shit. And I was yeah. like, I want that. Yeah, it's like, I got diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm diabetes baiting. Shouldn't all children have diabetes in so a way. they allowed fresh food? But yeah. like, it's like, <laughs> you, you would like be like, <laughs> like it, like the woman in <laughs> Blair is broken, our producer. <laughs> <Rob. laughs> Shouldn't all children have diabetes? Shouldn't they? Yeah. Shouldn't they? Shouldn't they? Shouldn't you know, they? put them through <laughs> something so they have character. So he died before your parents get divorced, you don't need to have diabetes. But, but if, if your parents did. are together, you should have diabetes. Yes. Well, and you know how I feel about parents, adult kids of divorce, where people are like, if you're 25 and your parents are getting divorced and you think it's sad, oh, shut no, the fuck up. Bro. Oh my God. There's nothing like, I'm sorry. No way. No way. No. Is it the same? People try to relate to me like, oh, my parents got divorced last year and when I was right, 32. But I was, I was an, like, I was an impressionable child. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I was a child who needed to be fed every night. Yeah. yeah. But like, are you kidding it's like you're not living with them. No. Up. Yeah. Adult I, twins, yeah. So adult sad. children of divorce. Adult twins. Disney adult twins. Adult twins at that point, worst. you get to decide who stays and who like either dies or moves away. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because like, if you're like, an adult identical twin and you're wearing fucking matching clothes, <laughs> you need a hobby. No, I it's feel true. the same way about people who like all their grandparents are alive and you're like 25, 30. It's like all your grandparents are alive. It's like why? Read a book. Yeah, Grow it's like up. you're, you're going to be hit so hard. I'm also, 27. Okay. All my grandparents are dead. Guess exactly. what? Stronger for Stronger it. Stronger for the it. The other thing is I'm going to say is that if you're a twin, you can, be, you can either be like really different or one can be trans and the other can't. That one's fine. <laughs> or if you are, if one of you is fat, one of you is skinny, that's fine. Yeah, you, you can't. Or if you're fraternal and you just look really different, that's okay. But you can't look the same. If you look the same, and you have no distinguishing features. That's really fucked up. It's actually fucked up. I've been scorned by so many twins in my life. And oh, it's no. like because they did like, a body swap on you. They body swap on me. <laughs> I get body. I get parent I trapped. Do they parent yeah. trap you? Blair? I get parent trapped all the time by twins. And it's <laughs> awful. Literally, I've been humiliated. I've been scorned. Don't cry, don't just hey, cry. Hey, hey, stop hey, crying, hey, stop hey. crying, stop crying, stop crying. Sorry, we have to go back to the history of the Titanic. <laughs> yes, okay, so he died of diabetes. <laughs> That's too bad about the diabetes. So then I'm the, sorry. the um, UK investigation, the British Board of Trade investigation began on May 2nd. I guess it is just the <gasps> My Britain. birthday month. My I didn't birthday know, month. I thought it was the UK, but it is actually just Britain. Okay. I'm going to say that because people are going to get yes. mad. <laughs> Britain. 
<laughs> and I, my <laughs> Irish sure ancestors. than what I said about diabetes. No, exactly. The diabetes community is way chiller than like <laughs> the Irish. Yeah. And yeah, I can say enough. that I'm Irish. Yeah, fair enough. Me too. I, I have Irish friends. <laughs> I have Irish friends. I'm Latino, if anyone's wondering mm. at home. <laughs> Just so you know, these two white women didn't forget about BIPOC people. Damn. <laughs> we didn't forget about BIPOC people. BIPOC people. So 97 witnesses. BIPOC. <laughs> 97 witnesses were questioned, including Sir Cosmo and Lady Duff Gordon. Fake oh, names. <laughs> okay. Those are pop stars of their I time. Know. Sir Cosmo, Cosmo and Wanda. And Lady Wanda. Duff Gordon. Who Lady escaped. Duff Gordon. Hillary Duff yeah, Gordon. They Hillary escaped. Duff Gordon. They had escaped on a lifeboat with only three other passengers and seven crewmen. And how many like, how many souls could have fit on like a lifeboat? 60. Like 60. 60. What? That's crazy. That is not good. No, it's <laughs> bad. Also, I love saying souls when we talk about souls. souls. How many souls could fit? But how many souls? souls? How many souls? How many souls? How many souls? Sir Cosmo. Souls? Sir Cosmo. He offered each crewman five pounds to replace their belongings. And to some, it looked as if this was a bribe for the crew to the crew for rowing away from those who were drowning. Damn! Stop it! That is fierce. <laughs> now that's drag. No, no, no that, Sir Cosmo is he's slaying. He's slaying. Boots the house down. Boots, that's kind drag, of Mama. That's drag. He's voking. That's voking. He's voking. <laughs> Carly's voting. He's, vo he's doing this thing while they're they're rowing away from those who are drowning. To, um, the inquiry concluded that they were not to blame, but the bad publicity damaged their reputations forever. That's too bad. Both inquiries, both the U.S. and the British, concluded that the high speeds, coupled with a disregard for icy conditions, led to the iceberg strike. Mm. The immense loss of life was a result of inadequate number of lifeboats and poor emergency procedure procedures. Mm. But as a result of the Titanic disaster, transatlantic regulations were changed to require enough lifeboats for every passenger and to standardize the protocols for reporting hazardous conditions. Because mm -hmm. what we kind of figured out through doing this is that, like, it was just like a perfect storm of everybody being fucked up. Like, they had more lifeboats yeah. than were necessary at the time. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Even though yeah. it was left, really? Yeah. So what happened to those lifeboats? They were just empty. So no, they just like, just like one. It, it wasn't required to have enough lifeboats for everyone on board. Gotcha. Because lifeboats were only supposed to shuttle you between the rescue ship. So they like in theory they were like the boat can just go back pick up more people. Oh. Um, and so yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's really too bad. Okay, the next <laughs> section of the aftermath, we're going to talk about Saved from the Titanic, which is the first Titanic movie. And it started a survivor of the Titanic and was released only 31 days after the sinking of the Titanic. 30, what, okay. Released 31 days is so psychotic. They literally read the headline and were like, let's get to work. Come on, guys. Get come on, work. ladies. Okay. I don't know. Come on, but like, ladies. correct me out if I'm wrong, but like, isn't that what they did? Like, they literally found this woman and this woman was an actress and we're like, we yes. gotta get you on set like today. Yes. That so, is so funny. it's a short, silent film and it. Premiered 31 days after the sinking on May 16th, 1912. Still my it's birthday month. Still my birthday <laughs> Taurus! month. Taurus! <laughs> That's also my birthday month. Blair I Blair. have a lot of Taurus. Don't read my notes. Sorry. I have the same ones open on my phone and I'm reading cards. I have a lot <laughs> of Taurus energy in my oh, life. Can yeah. both of you stop reading each Taurus, other's notes? Taurus. <laughs> My partner's a Taurus. Tor There's so many Taurus. Matt's a Taurus. What's our lovely producer is Rob's Taurus. Uh, but my partner's a Taurus. Okay. <gasps> oh! What's you finches? being a water sign is makes a lot of sense. Wait, which Matt, yes. which Matt is a Taurus? McCready. No, McCready's a Virgo. Hello. No, yeah. <gasps> Oh, no, I did this yeah, again. You did this again. Carly, you're obsessed with making. Um, Ben invited me to see a movie and then I thought it was for his birthday and it was like last month. It was so, and Carly, like, I, Carly yeah. was like, oh, like, thank you for thinking me to spend your birthday. And I was like, well, it's not my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> But Ben did this to me today when he was like, sorry, I missed your birthday party. I was like, it was just a party. Yes. <laughs> my birthday was in May. Saved from the Titanic starred Dorothy Gibson. She was 22 and on the first lifeboat off the Titanic. Oh and in God. the film, she wore the dress that she wore on the night of the sinking. Oh, so that's movie magic. Unfortunately, it is a lost film and was burned in a studio fire in 1914. So survived for only two years. That's but that, but it, what a banger two years. <laughs> yeah. A good time in history. It was her final film because she suffered a mental breakdown afterwards. Of course. <laughs> Which, yeah. you know, makes sense. Of course. Of course. I mean, it's pretty recently yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Makes sense. Yes. The film was basically based off of her own recount of her experience on the Titanic and was written very fast. So the group boarded lifeboat number seven 
27 other people were on board the boat when it was lowered at 12.40 a.m., just over an hour after the co- collision. Um, so late. The Sleepy. plug, the lifeboat's plug couldn't be found, so it was gushing with water until oh God. Um, this was remedied by volunteer contributions of lingerie from the women and garments from the men. <laughs> wow. So women were ripping out their panties exactly. and brawl acts. Um, sexy. They're, they're Ari bandos. Yeah, the one, somebody's on the lifeboat and they're like, oh, so, sorry, Ari, Ari bandos. Yeah, we gotta go back to this. Sorry, Ben. Ari. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, Ari. Airy. I, it's airy. It's I'm airy. using the correct Greek pronunciation. No. no. <laughs> You're not coming back from this. That's but something like somebody's, you said. Somebody's on, the life- <laughs> Some, somebody's on the lifeboat and they're like, oh, just that mine skims. <laughs> it's, just, it's shapewear. It was on backwards. It was a lot. For like a long it was very, time. They don't make this color anymore. No. It's, uh, this is the best color and like it's actually worth a lot on Depop. Yes. <laughs> so the film was completed in only a week. The entire process of filming, processing, and distribution took half the time that was normally required because the producers wanted to get it on screen while the disaster was still fresh in the minds of the public. That was smart marketing. Exactly. Yeah. It was 10 minutes long. Good good length. Okay, so and I'm going to read. Um, okay, so a reporter from the Motion Picture News described Dorothy as having, quote, the appearance of one whose nerves had been greatly shocked. <laughs> Wow. (laughs) It was said to have burst into tears during filming. To add to the film's air of authenticity, she wore the same clothes that she was rescued, which we said before. She co-wrote the script and was based on a fictionalized version of her own experiences, but they gave her a fictional fiance, (laughs) um, Ensign Jack, and they're shown waited anxiously for her return after hearing news of the disaster of the Titanic. She arrives safely back home and recounts the events of the disaster in a long flashback illustrated by newsreel footage of the Titanic, a mock-up of a collision itself, and a mock-up of the collision. The Titanic sinks, but Dorothy is saved. When she concludes her story, her mother urges Dorothy's fiancé to leave the Navy as as it is too dangerous of a career. Absolutely. True. True. But Jack ultimately rejects the mother's advice, deciding that he must do his duty for the flag and his country. Okay. No. Dorothy's father him. is moved by his patriotism and the film ends with his blessing of their marriage. That's crazy. I love how they made it about the man. I know, of course. <laughs> oh my gosh, she was literally on the Titanic. They're like, but he's in the Navy. And and that's dangerous. It's dangerous to be on boats. He's so like, no, I God. must do my duty. <laughs> can 31 I, days after. Can I just say. It was filmed in a week. I literally, me and some people are talking about making a short film now and we have three separate dinner dates planned to just talk ideas. <laughs> they don't do 31 day turnarounds no, anymore. No, Dorothy, Dorothy Gibson. <laughs> Dorothy Gibson would never. Dorothy no, Gibson absolutely never. not. Like, are you kidding? But you have to respect the hustle. Yeah. The imme- like, you know, when somebody immediately kind of starts to try and like really monetize their trauma, mm-hmm. like they're like my like I mean Jeanette McCurdy, but like my mom Jeanette died, McCurdy. and now I'm gonna write about it. Yeah, for sure. You do really have to respect the hustle of like I'm going to process this trauma as Dorothy yeah. Gibson. In real time. Oh yeah, for sure. Non-union gig, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, oh no, Miss, Miss Dor- Dorothy Gibson. Did union? Yeah. She's union. <laughs> Did unions exist <laughs> in 1912? No, like, yeah. I know because no the reason. Way. Well, the reason that <laughs> no all, way. The reason that everybody moved out, like the reason Hollywood's out west, is because like they moved productions out there in like the 30s because of there was too much unionization. Don't know, <laughs> don't know why you're pointing to me. Because <laughs> you're a scab. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, truly, I think about how much I can get done if I didn't have, as part of my creative process, like six months of mulling on an idea. I yeah. know. If you just like, did wow. it. Wow. Yeah. I know. She was like the TikToker of her generation. She yeah, for sure. Her. I'd be like, I don't know if this is what I want to be known for. <laughs> <laughs> She's like fully sobbing on set, having a mental breakdown. Um, I'm worried about her. I'm worried about her. Is she, what's she doing now? Well, she's, it's the 19, it was... She's fine. She's, she oh, went to, she went to live on a farm. Oh, thank God. I hope she's with okay. My, with my childhood dog? Yeah. Yes. She's hanging out with Snuffy. Snuffy. <laughs> what was your childhood dog Snuffy. name? I didn't have one. I was just doing a bit with you. <laughs> Great wow. actor. So, I am chills. So that's called a lie. A lie. And actually, Whoa. Ben, I want to say you're the Jay Bruce Ismay of this podcast. No. Because you're a coward. No. And a liar. Mm. And, we and a man. And no, man. no, 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 no. And you're actually taking a seat that could easily be occupied by a woman. Oh, well, well, I have news for you both. What? You two remind me of the iceberg and that you're cold ice queens who kill, who kill. 
for attention. Okay, first of all, there was only one iceberg, so we can't both remind you of the iceberg. iceberg. But, but you're That's both your sitting beside each other. Mistake. You sound so stupid right no, now. No, I sound crazy, not stupid. You actually sound stupid. like an idiot. I sound crazy, not stupid. No, you sound <laughs> so dumb right now. You sound like you're in love with the iceberg. Yeah, it sounds like that you kind of love the iceberg and you want to fuck the ice. It's actually kind of weird that you're no. saying that to us when you so clearly want to fuck around? the iceberg. You're what rock they, hard right now. I don't want to fuck are the iceberg, around? but are and, they and around? The iceberg, let's say the iceberg and the Titanic, they them. The Titanic's a she. <laughs> so she they, she they. I'm going to shut up. Now, she, I hate it here, yeah, now we're going to move on to some stories of survival. Okay. So we talked a little bit last week about Charles Young, and he was the chef on the Titanic. Ooh. And while the lifeboats were going down, he um, just got drunk in his cabin. And then he would like help people in the lifeboats go back to his cabin, get drunk in his cabin. He gave the spot on a lifeboat up to a woman. And then as the Titanic was sinking, he was throwing stuff overboard, like chairs and stuff, so people could grab onto stuff. And then waited for the boat to just lower him into the water, got off. And because he was drunk, he was so warm and he just swam to the nearest lifeboat and survived. I have full body chills right now. I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, he's I literally, love this. He's literally iconic. That is so funny. And also, what? A, and that is the, because I've worked in restaurants in my life. There's yeah. chefs be like that. Oh, yeah. There's always, a, they're drunk. He has, they're yeah. nice. He's, <laughs> he's, he's groping the 16 year old hostess. Of course, of course. But she's wearing a black mini skirt. Yeah. It's Joey's. Yeah, it's Joey's baby. He has sleeve tattoos. Can I just say, tattoos. I just say that the problem. most Coke like problem. chef thing of him to do is to go up to do something, then go back, drink more, and yes. then go back. Yes. I'm like, that is so. It's like, honey, there's a Rush. There's an inner so, rush. And she's like, no. yeah. Well, I gotta, I gotta have another smoke. Yeah. You know, like it's like, why are you, why are you sitting in the garbage right now? You know what I mean? Like you're out cool. in the lobby, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or <laughs> out in, the, in the alley. A tr true, like Bugs Bunny logic too, of just like waiting for the boat to go officially under the water, and then like ah, yeah. just like ease into it. That makes yeah. sense. Makes that's really cute. There's I love that story. Katie Gilna, she was 16 and immigrating to America to join her sister. And she was one of the last people in the lifeboat because as the lifeboat, last lifeboat was going away, she was saying like, please, I want to see my sister again. And they let her on. Aww. What's interesting about her story is that the trauma warped her brain so much that she recent, not recently, she's fully dead, but gave an no. interview in like the uh, like 50s or something like that yeah. talk about the Titanic. And she says that she thought that that was kind of all part of it. Like her trauma brain made her think like, oh, the way you immigrate to America is you get on a boat, it sinks. Thousands of people die. Oh my God. And then, but if you get on that life, well, the lifeboat takes you to another boat, then oh you go to the, God. like she thought like, cause her trauma brain made it so that she thought that it was supposed to happen. <gasps> oh my Where God. was she coming from? Uh, Ireland. <laughs> oh, then check out. Ireland. <laughs> the name like that. You go to see my sister. Please, my sister. Um, the, an interesting story that I also read about in terms of yeah. survivors is that there was six Chinese passengers on board the Titanic at the time. Yeah. They were taking the Titanic to New York and then we're going to tra uh, travel to the Caribbean to do work there. Oh. What's important to note is, I'm gonna read this specifically, um, the Chinese Exclusion Act, which mm. was enacted in 1882, which was a federal law that prohibited Chinese immigration. Wow. So when they survived, there were six Chinese passengers um, and um, six, all six survived. Ooh. Hello, I'll hold it. <laughs> <laughs> all six survived. Yeah. Um, and they were like, they weren't allowed to enter America on the Carpathian. Like they were turned right back around and left because they weren't allowed to immigrate to America while every other person on the Titanic was granted like- So evil. You know, like yeah, whatever the- Asylum. A tinfoil blanket and a cup of tea. Exactly, they didn't let them. And they were also like absolutely torn to shreds in the press because of racism of being mm -hmm. like, there was rumors that they hid under the seats of the lifeboats and oh. stuff like that, which they didn't do. Oh like they were, God. they drowned, but then they were like picked up later, yeah. but there was all these horrible stuff. Of course. Um, Your spot should have gone to a white person. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, or a child. Or a child. Yes, and this like- A white child, or, or yes. our, our favorite, a, a white, white child. child. <laughs> a, a white child. There was also um, Masabumi Hosono, and he was a Japanese businessman and the only Japanese passenger on the Titanic. Wow. Um, and when he eventually got a spot on the lifeboat, he was a second class uh, passenger, and he was just like allowed to be on the, like, you know what I mean? They let, they let him on the mm -hmm. lifeboat. Yeah. But in the media, they said that he was a stowaway and all these things. Again, he was a victim God. of a lot of like racist yeah. remarks. He went back to Japan and his life was normal for a little bit. But then later the narrative switched because you know how like Japan is like a very honor-based save, saving face society. Yeah. Um, where like he lost his job because he survived the Titanic. His family was in shame because of the Titanic and all these oh things. God. Another, thing. but a cool thing was that his son is like a famous... What's that band you like? Oh my God, I need to look it up. Okay, you look it up. His son is like in a famous Japanese pop band. Is it Rad Wimps? No. I love Rad Wimps. Do you like Rad Wimps, Blair? No. They're a great Japanese pop punk band. This? 
Rob was so good. Very kind of math rock. You'd be like, I love it. Okay. His grandson is Haruyumi Hosono, who is in a Yellow Magic Orchestra. Oh my God. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, it's actually massive. Do they talk about this? Yeah, it's like it's on the Wikipedia page for sure. Yeah, yeah. isn't that fun? Is that, that's insane. Really cool. Yeah, so those are the main ones. I mean, we also had like there's like stories of um, like the junior wireless oper- operator who survived, um, and he told, told a story of like when he went to like the uh, like the the office, like the wireless operating office. People were like fighting over life jackets, and somebody tried to stab his friend to get his life jacket, and then he hit him over the head with like a pipe or something, and he died. <laughs> Stuff like that. That's insane. Yeah, but those are some of like the big stories yeah. of survival of yeah. the Titanic. Like, the, you know, the chef that's iconic. Yeah. The 1910s were racist. For sure. The 1910s were racist. (laughs) Were flappers kind of flapping about with their little bobs in their dresses back then? No, not yet. Oh, but come on. You're literally wrong. The Titanic. You had to wait until the first World War. Okay, now you're breaking. You're breaking the set because you're upset with me. I'm sorry. (laughs) You know what time it is. I know what time it is. Let's make this tragedy about us. Yes, it's the part of the podcast where we make the tragedy of the Titanic about us. Because even though people died, the most important thing is that we are having fun right now. And we're being centered. Period. So, Ben, we have a question for you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As you know, Dorothy Gibson, 31 Days Off of the Titanic, monetizes her trauma in a short, silent film. Yes. If you're on the Titanic, how, and you survive, how are you monetizing your trauma? Thank you. First of all, thank you for asking. Of course. Me. Just to be asked is to be so, is to be seen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. How I'd monetize it is, first of all, I'm getting my ass to www.fox.com slash dance. And for those of you who know, well, that's so you think you can dance as a website. <gasps> oh. Okay. And I'm applying to audition <gasps> for that show. You should be on The Mass Singer. Oh, a mass singer. So you think, wait, would, can I just say, I please. thought you were going to say Dancing with the Stars. No. And that would have been crazy. That dancing been also, with the Titanic Survivor. Dancing with the Titanic Survivor. Amazing. But how I would, I would create art kind of based off being on the Titanic. Yeah, kind of like dance, a, a Maddie dance. Ziegler dance mom. So you know when she dances as Anne Frank? Ooh, no. What? <laughs> I know that this is real and now this is going to be my whole day. There's a really <laughs> awesome clip of dance moms in which one of the moms, real? one of the moms asks all the girls who are auditioning for the Anne Frank dance. One of the moms asks if Anne Frank is real. And then it cuts to Holly, who is Naya's mom. And she's like smart. And she's like talking to camera and a thing being like, I really think these women should know who Anne Frank is. <laughs> That's <laughs> in. Same. That is awesome. so. I'm picturing like the exact home. like dance from Sea is Chandelier, it's, but with an It's Anne Frank very with. much that. It's just like she's. It's she, Anne Frank. You yes. don't know that she's Anne Frank except for the fact that they're like this dance is called Misery and Frank or something like uh, that. My dance would be a little different. Okay. My dance is I would have a Jabberwocky mask on yes. and I would be doing very like sharp, articulate like yeah. Jabberwocky <gasps> dance. That would be so beautiful though, because that's like yes. when it when this when we're getting to the climax of the yes, ships. Absolutely. Thinking, you're getting like really jerky. And then get this. I have my friend, maybe one of you can help me. Okay. Okay. Pull the fire alarm. Sprinklers go off. <gasps> Sprinklers go off. Sprinklers go off. Holly dance. People are shrieking. That's People good. are crying. Titanic survivors have been invited to the live studio audience. Yeah. They're, They're traumatized. traumatized all over They're again. They're in catatonic. They're in a state of catatonic shock. And I win the whole entire season. And Mary Murphy, Mary Murphy does this. You're on the hot tamale train. <laughs> that was awesome. the thing she would say. That was I, the know. Thing she would- I know. I <laughs> know. I know. And you should also be on the mass singer after that. I'd be on the mass singer. What would I'm- your, what would your like animal be? My animal would be a manatee. Oh, yeah. The hottest one. Yeah. Because you have humanity. <gasps> and manatees yeah. are in the water and the, t- the survivors. Like, hey, we're and in the water. A, I'd be a cis manatee. Okay. I'd be a cis manatee. That's it's actually real, not the same joke really I made at all. rough joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what song would you sing? Oh, my God. Umbre- umbrella. Oh. No, like I would it's, do, it's like a really slow version of Umbrella. I would do Glee's Umbrella singing in the rain remix. Uh 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 yeah. Uh-huh, <laughs> exactly. uh-huh, good girl I'm gone singing bad. Singing in the rain. We'll shine together. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to Glee last night. Like I was listening to the Glee oh covers last night. God. So this is fresh in my mind. That's Gwyneth Paltrow and Matthew Morrison. A period. Do you want to know one of my favorite Gwyneth Paltrow songs in history? And I think it's better than the original. Yeah. Forget you. Well, yes, but landslide. Oh. Better than Fleetwood um, Mac. I don't know. Better. No, better. no, no. It better is. than the chicks. Literally. It's not better than put, the chicks. Get, get the chicks better and Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac, Mac to a shooting range, shoot them dead. No. And I'm and, the only people to sing that and song. It's worth Naya Rivera. Yeah. That's what you do at the shooting range. <laughs> you shoot people dead. <laughs> that's what that's for. That's what happens at the shooting range. And, 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 and 
Brittany, no, what's her yeah. name? Heather Morris. Heather, Heather Morris. Morris. Brittany Pierce. Who did a dance in honor of George Floyd. Well, good. And that's <laughs> awesome. On TikTok. She got a little bit of pushback for that. Kind of like, did you see what, Did you see when the pandemic happened and all the NYU Tisch, like all the Tisch students were like, well, we want our tuition back because we're not like in the studio, like learning art. Like we yeah. want our tuition back. And the head of Tisch Arts sent an email to all of them that was like, Short email, first of all, I think one body paragraph saying like, sorry, we can't give you your money back. And then she filmed a dance, a freestyle lyrical dance in her office with her laptop camera. And I highly suggest we all watch it now because I think any of us who's gone through any sort of uh, arts program or just works in any sort yeah. of creative industry. That's Jay, oh, Bruce, sure. that's Jay Bruce Ismay. That's Jay Bruce, Jay Bruce Ismay. Ismay releases an he's, interpretive dance. He's apologizing yes. for the sinking of the Titanic. Yeah. Going live. Yeah, he's going yeah. yeah, he's filming on his laptop camera an interpretive <laughs> yeah. dance of his apologies. It's an HP laptop. Yeah, yeah for sure. Grainy, no. grainy, 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 It's a little, little grainy, tiny video. Grainy, grainy. Petra Collins got her fingers on it. Okay, can I also say... <laughs> the, the blank stare Carly gave me when I said that. I just don't know who that is. You know who Petra Collins is? You're crazy You're for crazy that. For You're that. crazy for no, that. No, she didn't grow up. She didn't grow up in the city. Sorry, you know, I forgot you didn't grow up cool. Yeah. No, that's a lie. You did grow you up. You did. I grew up happy. <laughs> not, not true. No, you know what? So bad. <laughs> okay, we should wrap up. Oh, Ben, well, thank you up. so much for being on the yes. podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I thank you I for love, joining us. I love us. you too. I love you, you too. You killed it. If anybody here wants to find you to talk about Tibby dying, mm. where can they find what, all the comedy that you, you do? You can find me at the local glory hole second cock. <laughs> I'm kidding. You can find me at Ben Sosa, right? Oh my God. <laughs> Rob, our producer is truly trembling. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Ben Sosa, right? On all social media platforms. Ben Sosa, right? S-O-S-A. I'm not Portuguese. Don't put a U or a Z in there. I'd be furious. To He's that. not I'm Portuguese. not Portuguese. People love to think I'm that. People and, love to think I'm that. And you know what? Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, wow. And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to watch this video when this is done. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. We love you guys. We'll put it in the show notes yeah. and we will put a link to the NYU Tish's uh, interpretive dance. Yeah. Thank you guys so Incredible. much. This Thank you, everyone. Titanic. We love you. Bye. Love Bye. You. Love Bye. you. Bye. Bye.